If there is one issue at a theme park that I can improve on, it would be better restrooms. Just kidding, of course it's better operations. I'm a coaster enthusiast who wants to ride as many roller coasters as humanly possible in one day. I'm a nerd. Unlike most people when they're waiting in line for the newest and latest roller coaster at their favorite park, I'm not standing there on my phone playing Clash Royale, flipping through Insta or TikTok. Nope, I'm at timing their dispatches, actively watching their staff to see how well they perform. Are they understaffed? How well do these trains load and how fast is their loading process? In this video, I thought it would be fun to discuss a few reasons that affect operations and what steps that they can be taken to improve these situations. The first issue, problem, or whatever you want to call it, will be the restraints. Each roller coaster make and model can have different types of restraints. These styles can dramatically affect the loading process of their roller coaster. An over-the-shoulder strap with a belt buckle will take longer to secure than a simple lap bar that has no additional seatbelt. Hyper coasters by B&M are designed to load fast, usually by having a simple clamshell restraint that is easy to secure. Their Giga Coaster models, as far as I'm aware, all have an additional seatbelt. This seatbelt slows down the loading process because staff have to first check the belt, then make sure the lap bar is properly secured. If these seatbelts were removed, I would bet that these Giga Coasters by B&M would load a lot faster, thus improving their overall dispatch times. Now, I don't know the logistics if these seatbelts are requirements from the manufacturer or additional safety measures requested by the park to help lower insurance costs. Just like their hypercoaster models, I don't think that these seatbelts are necessary. The clamshell restraint is what keeps their riders safely on board throughout the entire ride experience. Roller coasters by Rocky Mountain Construction are also plagued by this problem. Having the seatbelt and lap bar combo really slows down the loading process. Guests first have to secure their seatbelt, wait for it to be checked by the ride staff, then secure the lap bar followed by the staff checking the restraint. As much as I love coasters like Steel Vengeance and Iron Gwazi, their seatbelt lap bar combo can really drag on operations. A great example of restraints done right, let's take a look at Velocicoaster at Islands of Adventure. This is a simple over-the-shoulder lap bar that is easily secured and checked by staff. No additional seatbelt or buckles to worry about. This is one of the many reasons why Velocicoaster has fantastic operations. The next aspect that affects operation would be ride-offs, the park staff. When a roller coaster is understaffed, it will greatly affect the operations of that attraction. Most roller coasters need a minimum of like four staff members checking the restraints, two stationed at the front of the train, two stationed at the back of the train. Sorry to pick on Iron Gwazi again, but during my visit, the ride only had two staff members working the train. If they had four staff members, say like they do on Steel Vengeance or Twisted Timbers, their loading process would be a lot faster. We also have the additional staff that handle the queue, station, and whatnot. These additional staff members in the queue are crucial to good operations. I know that many coaster enthusiasts don't like this policy, but I'm actually kind of a fan of assigned seating. There are many benefits to this practice. First, the trains are loaded more efficiently, ensuring that all rows are filled. When there is no staff manning the lines in the station, it can turn into chaos. I couldn't tell you how many times I've walked into a station that is overflowing with people. At the same time, there would be a couple empty rows on that train because the crowds were blocking those rows. Everyone is waiting for the front row and no one realized that the second row is completely empty because you can't see it through the crowd of people. If you had someone manning the station, doing assigned seating, this would never be a problem. Also, if your ride has a fast lane, quick queue, or whatever you want to call it, make sure that the ride has the proper staffing to handle this additional queue. I remember being at Carowinds, I purchased the Fast Lane Plus to ensure that we would have enough time to ride the roller coasters and get all of our video and photos done for the day. I walked up the Fast Lane queue for Copperhead Strike, but once I got into the station, there was no one manning the line, so I had to awkwardly jump into the main queue. Bottom line is, have the proper amount of staff for your attraction. Finally, let's talk about ride capacity. 
doing basic math will tell you that a train that can hold 32 passengers will have a higher input than a train that can only hold 12. Of course, there are other factors to consider like dispatch times. A roller coaster that holds 32 passengers and is dispatched every 90 seconds can send a total of 1,280 riders an hour. A coaster that holds 12 passengers but is capable of dispatching every 30 seconds can send a total of 1,440 people an hour. So yeah, your dispatch time, which is greatly affected by the previous topics I mentioned, will affect your overall output. So in some ways, the size of the train doesn't matter if you can send the train faster. Slow is always going to be slow regardless of how many people you can fit into one train. Not only the amount of passengers each train can hold, but how many trains are on the track will greatly affect operations. Even if the staff is on point, capable of sending a train out of the station in 45 seconds, we'll still have longer operations because the train has to also complete the course. The average coaster ride time including the lift is like 2 minutes, so a train that can hold 32 passengers completing a cycle every 2 minutes and 45 seconds, it will send a max total of 704 guests an hour. And mind you, 45 seconds for unloading and loading the train is really good, so most likely we're looking at like 4 minutes a cycle. If you had two trains on the track, well, one train is completing the course, the other one is swapping out passengers in the station. In theory, you could double those numbers, again depending on how long the ride is and how fast the trains can be loaded. Not every roller coaster can function with multiple trains. A boomerang roller coaster, the Skyrocket 2 models, or other various shuttle coasters come to mind. Sure, some of these are able to work with a dual loading station, that is if the park opted to pay the higher premiums for this feature, but regardless, if it can only function with one train, then your ride ops are more important than ever to get the best dispatch numbers. Everything that I discussed in this video, when they all work together, will create the most ideal scenarios for operations. So to recap, the most important aspects that affect operations is the train capacity, the style of restraint, ride, staff, and finally, park guests. Next is the guests themselves. Let's face it, everyone riding a roller coaster isn't an enthusiast, so chances are they don't know all the ins and outs of loading and unloading any particular coaster. Rides like Iron Gwazi, Fury 325, Wicked Cyclone, Steel Vengeance, Orion, Steel Curtain, etc. all require you to buckle the seatbelt first, but don't touch the lap bar. If you aren't paying attention to the signs, or it's just chaotic and loud in the station, you're not going to know what to do and you will follow your instincts, which is to buckle then pull down on the lap bar. That means that the ride ops have to unlock your restraint, pull it back up, and then check your seatbelt. These small issues can really drag on the overall operations of the ride. If guests are given clear instructions prior to boarding, this would help the matter. However, the best thing is to simply have a better restraint system that doesn't require multiple steps by the passenger. The fact is, people just don't pay attention. So, you as a guest, what can you do to help improve ride operations? Well, there are actually a few steps you can take. First, before entering the queue, if there is a test seat and you're concerned if fitting on the attraction will be a problem, double check. That way, you know that you're ready to go once you make it into the station. Next, read the ride policies, somewhat tagging off that last point, but more specific. Make sure you are capable of riding, then ensure all your loose items are properly secured or left with a non-rider. This is so important. I don't know how many times I witnessed a train being slowed down for dispatch because someone thought that they could take their phone with them or wear an unsecured hat or whatever it is, slowing down the wait time for everyone else. Make sure to listen to all instructions by the ride staff. If they tell you to buckle first and don't touch the restraint, then listen to them. This will speed up the dispatch times considerably. Finally, figure out which row you want to take before entering the queue. I've seen plenty of times while guests are trying to decide on a row, they let multiple rows in front of them dispatch empty because they are blocking the line. Decide where to go in advance and head to that row once you enter the station. Make sure you aren't blocking or occupying other rows, that way it is clear to everyone riding the roller coaster. Bottom line is, follow the instructions and listen to the staff and everything will go fine. So yeah, pay attention. 
Well, that's going to do it for today's video. I hope all this information was informative. I might be overcritical about certain aspects, but again, I need to when discussing such complex topics as operations. Overall, you are at the park to have fun, meaning so are lots of other people too. Patience is a virtue, so remember that before getting super upset at other guests and staff because they're not moving or working as fast as you desire. That's also a lesson I could take to heart as well. Thank you for watching today's video. If you enjoyed this content, hit that like button. New viewers to the channel, make sure you subscribe, that way you continue to get more great content brought to you by X-Screen Thrills.